As we edge closer to Election Day, attention has increasingly turned to the down ballot races. The big story now, can Republicans maintain control of the House and, in particular, the Senate? Today, the nonpartisan Cook Political Report released its new rankings, with Cook predicting Democrats will pick up five to seven seats and will likely gain control of the chamber. In moments, we'll talk about it with former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich, but we begin tonight with Trace Gallagher reporting from our West Coast newsroom. Trace? And Megan, just like the old E.F. Hutton commercials, when Charlie Cook and his political report talk, people listen. And the reason Cook now says Democrats will pick up five to seven seats in the Senate and regain control is that Republican senators in toss-up states can no longer run their own races because Donald Trump is drowning them out. The report says the slow leak in the GOP Senate balloon came the day the Access Hollywood tape went public. And trying to turn the tide with only two weeks left could prove difficult at best for two reasons. One, the Clinton campaign feels emboldened and is now pumping millions of dollars into the races of down-ballot candidates. And two, early voting is underway in more than 30 states. And traditionally, Democrats perform better than Republicans in early voting. Experts say the GOP's best hope is to convince casual Republicans to go to the polls so Hillary Clinton doesn't walk into the White House with a blank check. In fact, voter turnout will likely be the difference in the battle for Harry Reid's Senate seat in Nevada, where former Nevada Attorney General and Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto is deadlocked with Nevada Republican Congressman Joe Heck. The fear for Republicans is that Hillary Clinton dominates the race along the eastern seaboard before the polls even close in the West, and some Republican voters in Nevada might then decide to opt out of voting. We should note that Republican incumbent Senators Kelly Ayotte in New Hampshire and Marco Rubio in Florida are also locked in do or die races, but both of them are still holding small leads. As for the House, Democrats would need to pick up 30 seats to regain control, but for now, even the most optimistic polls give them a net gain of just 10 to 18 seats, so it looks like the GOP holds the House. Mm -hmm. Megan. Trace, thank you. Joining us now with more, Newt Gingrich. He served as Speaker of the House. He's a Trump supporter and author of the book treason. Great to see you, Mr. Speaker. Thanks for being here. So it's good to be back. I mean, with with Cook and many other nonpartisan independent pollsters now saying that the Senate is likely lost to the Republicans. What does that say? I mean, if Donald Trump loses this White House race and the Republicans lose the Senate, does that suggest that the Republicans nominated the wrong candidate at the top of their Look, ticket? The next two weeks are a contest of two parallel universes. Uh, I just listened to that report. First of all, I used to hang out with Charlie Cook when he would explain that Donald Trump was hopeless and would not get the nomination. I like Charlie. That doesn't mean he's infallible. But let's, let's take the, the report we just got. Republicans are actually outvoting Democrats in Florida. They're outvoting Democrats in Pennsylvania. That's unprecedented. They've cut the you Democratic lead. You predict a win lead. in Pennsylvania? I think they might. Really? Uh, you think Trump's going to win Pennsylvania? Oh, Look, all I can report to you right now is they're outvoting the Democrats in early voting, uh, which is also true in Florida, which is unprecedented. But all uh, of the polls in Pennsylvania Democrats have her early. winning. What? All of the oh, polls look, in Pennsylvania I, have her head. I know. Oh. I just told you we have two alternative universes right now. Uh, in Iowa, for example, the Democrats are 50,000 votes behind where they were with Barack Obama in turnout. Uh, the governor is very confident we're going to carry Iowa, which Obama carried last time. I could just carry you through case after case like this. In Minnesota, we're almost certainly going to win the congressional seat up around Duluth, uh, which is a very Democratic area, but it deeply dislikes Hillary Clinton uh, and represent. Now, but let me just ask you. Let me, let me just ask you because uh, you say it's two alternate yeah. universes. Um, I mean, you're these are sort of small examples of how he might be heading early voting and so on. But I'm telling you that the Fox News decision desk just moved Iowa that you just mentioned, Indiana, second con congressional district in Maine. All of them moved left, moved more likely to vote for Hillary Clinton. And in fact, all of the moves that sure. have been on this map over the past three weeks by Larry Sabato, by Cook, by the Fox News decision right. desks. These are nonpartisan outlets that are just trying to call the electoral They're not nonpartisan scoreboard. nonpartisan outlets. Every outlet you describe is part of the establishment. Fox News, uh, really, are we? I don't think so. Oh, and they all, on. every state they've moved, they've moved it to the left towards Hillary. And you tell me whether that's all made up. 
No, I think there are two alternative universes. You have a poll which suggests that she's going to get a Barack Obama turnout among African Americans. I don't think that's going to happen. You have a Washington Post ABC News poll where they took out 8% of the vote because they didn't like the way it voted. Look, I'm, I've been around long enough. I remember when the Detroit liberal newspaper on the Sunday before the election said John Engler would lose by 14 points. He won the governorship that year. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't take the, I don't take polls as seriously as people who've never run for office. But your candidate, I can tell you. your candidate loves them and has touted them from the beginning. And he's been behind in virtually every one out of the, out of the last 40 polls that we've seen over the past right. month. That's the reality. Look, if you want to assume the election's over, skip the next two weeks and we can talk about the future. I'm not assuming Fine. anything. I'm, I'm, just, I'm asking you whether you believe right. your candidate's behind based on these numbers and what I, it says about the, the down ballot very, races. I, I believe the odds are at least one in three and maybe better than that that the difference in intensity and the difference in determination and the degree to which Hillary Clinton is clearly the most corrupt, dishonest person ever nominated by a party all mean that the odds are pretty good she's not going to win. Mm -hmm. Now, I actually believe that. This is not just because I'm for Donald Trump. I actually believe the American people so let me, let are me ask sickened you about that. by this. So she, sure. let's assume she is corrupt, right? She was Fair just assumption. as corrupt three weeks ago and three months ago, and she she would have been corrupt and collapsing physically on September 11th of this year. And her poll numbers tanked. But then you know what happened. He had a rough first debate. He took the bait on Alicia Machado. He stayed in that trap for a week. The Access Hollywood yeah. tape came out, which was not produced by Hillary Clinton. That was Trump on that camera was, talking Megan, about grabbing I just women. Heard, look, I just heard you go through this with, 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 with uh, Governor Pence. I get yeah. it. I know where you're coming from. But let me point out something to you. Sure. The three major networks spent 23 minutes attacking Donald Trump that night and 57 seconds on Hillary Clinton's secret speeches. You don't think this is a scale of bias worthy of Pravda and Izvestia? I mean, you want to know why Donald Trump's had a rough if time? If Trump is At a least, sexual predator, that is... He's not a sexual predator. Okay, you that's can't your say opinion. That. I'm you not taking not a position on it. You could not defend that statement. I, I'm, now, I am I'm not sick and tired of people it. like you using language that's inflammatory that's not true. Excuse me, Mr. Donald, Speaker. Donald, Donald, Donald you Trump You have no was idea whether it's true or not. What we know is that neither, there are at least... Neither do you. That's right, and I'm not so, taking a position on, on it, unlike you. Yes, you are. You. When you use the words, you took a position. So what I, think I said it's very is very unfair of you to do that, Megan. Incorrect. I think that is exactly the bias people are upset by. I think that your defensiveness on this may speak volume, sir. No, what I said let me just is suggest if, to you... No, no, no. Let me make my point, and then I'll give you the floor. What right. I said is if... Trump is a sexual yeah. predator, then it's a big story. And what we saw on that tape was Trump himself saying that he likes to grab women by the genitals and kiss them against their will. That's what we saw. Then we saw 10 women come forward after he denied actually doing it right. at a debate to say that was untrue. He did it to me. He did it to me. We saw reporters. We saw right. people who had worked with him, people from Apprentice and so on and so forth. He denies it all, which is his right. We don't know what the truth is. My so, point to you so, is, as a media, as a media story, we don't get to say the ten women are lying. Oh. We have to cover that story, sir. Oh, sure. Okay. So, so it's worth 23 minutes of the three networks to cover that story, and Hillary Clinton in a secret speech in Brazil to a bank that pays her 225,000, saying her dream is an open border where 600 million people could come to America. That's not worth covering. That is worth I mean, covering. You want to go back and through the did. tapes of your show recently? You are fascinated with sex and you don't care about public policy. Me? Now, that's really? what I get out of watching <laughs> you tonight. You know what? Mr. Speaker, I'm not fascinated by sex, but I am fascinated by the protection of women and understanding okay. what we're getting in the Oval Office. And I think the okay. American voters would like and to know. And therefore, we're going to send Bill Clinton back to the East Wing because, after all, you are worried about sexual predators. Yeah, listen, it's not about me. It's about the women and men of America. And the poll numbers show us that the women of America, in particular, are very concerned about these allegations and, in large part, believe that they are you, a real issue. And you don't comment, dismiss you the comment women, on whether the Clinton, summarily. Do you want to comment on whether the Clinton ticket has a relationship to a sexual predator? We on the Kelly file have covered that story as well, sir. I will no, tell I you the polls. I want to use the words. I want to hear you words. Bill Clinton's sexual predator. I dare you. Say Bill Clinton's sexual predator. Mr. Speaker, we covered. By the, excuse me, sir. Disbarred by the Arkansas me, bar. Disbarred by excuse the Arkansas me. bar. Excuse $850, me. $850,000 penalty. Excuse me, sir. 
We on the Kelly File have covered the Clinton matter as well. We've hosted Kathleen Willey. Well, we've, we've covered the examples of him being accused as well, but he's not on the ticket. And the polls also show that he'll the American the, public is less in interested in the deeds of Hillary Clinton's husband than they are in the deeds of the man who asks us to make him president, Donald Trump. We're going to have to leave it at that. And you can take your anger issues and spend some time working on them, Mr. Speaker. Thanks for being and here. You too, and you too. You too. So we're taking your thoughts on that. Facebook.com slash The Kelly File. As we get into the home stretch, a high-ranking retired commander is taking part in a brand new ad for Hillary Clinton. Four-star General John